All right, hey guys, welcome to episode five of Pursuing Jesus. Today, we are going to talk about how to hear God. And for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can see that I've got my little boy strapped to my chest in this little wrap. And for those of you listening, you might be able to hear his little baby breath. So I'm just going to be praying that he continues to get rest and I'll be able to record this episode. Um, man, I want to thank you guys so much for listening. You know, we only have four episodes out since maybe five or six days ago, and we already have over 3,000 streams hitting over 20 countries. It's incredible. And so I really want to thank you. And I also want to invite you, if you feel led, you can partner with us monthly. Um, you can sign up for a monthly gift through Anchor which is the main streaming app that we use. It distributes to Spotify and Apple and several others. Anchor, or through Modern Day, which is available at the link in my bio. And we're asking any of our listeners who love what we're doing to consider a $5 a month gift. Now, that's about a cup of coffee at Starbucks a month. And if you already support us, I want to thank you. It's only because of you guys that we can do what we do. You know, we are unpaid missionaries, and so every gift, every donation literally supports our family in every single way, from food to rent to gas, and of course, to doing things like this and even the travel. You know, I just traveled to Miami to be a part of a revival. Uh, Several thousand people gathered, and we were able to make that trip happen because of your generosity. So I want to thank you guys so much, and if you want to support us, Feel free, again, on Anchor or on Modern Day. $5 a month is what we're recommending. Any amount helps so much. You can give less, you can give more. All I ask is that you pray and ask God. If you feel stirred or led to support us, just ask God how much to give. And I will say that the monthly gifts are more helpful um, for a sustainable budget than one-time gifts. But obviously, we're thankful for anything that comes in. And so I wanted to extend that invitation to you. And I want to encourage you. Follow, follow this podcast on Spotify or Apple or Anchor or wherever you're listening. Hit the follow button, hit the bell or turn on notifications. That way you get updates. You know, I've subscribed to my own podcast. That way I would see how the updates work. And when I posted an episode, I got an alert on my phone that said, hey, episode four is available now from Pursuing Jesus. And that was really cool. So if you like what we're doing, you don't want to miss an episode, make sure you follow and turn on notifications. Now, Today, we're going to talk about how to hear God. You know, in my walk with the Lord, I can say this has been one of the most transformative and critical pieces of my relationship with God. Because, you know, many of you know my testimony. I grew up for 25 years in the church. I believed in God. I knew everything that I had been taught in the Bible, and, you know, I believed it, but my relationship with him was a one-way relationship, and I wouldn't even call it a real relationship. It was me letting God know the things I was upset about. It was me asking God for things. It was me, 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 me. But John ten twenty seven it says something different. It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. This is Jesus talking. And I remember reading that, you know, as a new Christian, almost six years ago, you know, January 23rd, it's coming up in four days, that'll be my sixth birthday in the Lord, and my wife and I always celebrate, we get a little cake, but I remember I started in the book of John, you know, so a week or two from now, I would have been reading this chapter, and it struck me that Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Well, for us to hear his voice, that must mean that he speaks. And it says that he knows us and that we follow him. You know, like I said in my testimony before, when I encountered the Lord, I was so aware in an instant that my life had become all about me. That I'd never really lived for God one day of my life. I had gone to church, I'd done all the stuff. But at the end of the day, my life was about me. 
my goals, my dreams, my desires, and I was fitting God into it. And how many of you know that that doesn't work? (laughs) It doesn't provide any type of fulfillment. It's not even biblical. It's wrong. But when I look at John 10, 27, I see it almost like an equation. Because we hear his voice and because he knows us, we follow him. Why follow Jesus? Because he knows me and he speaks to me. So I know that he's real. You know, and I think about the woman at the well. Jesus knew her life. How? Because of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, why don't you go get your husband? And she's like, well, you know, I've I've had many husbands. He's like, yeah, you're right. You've had five husbands. And the man you're living with now, he's not even your husband. You know, Jesus started to read her mail without knowing her. Why? Because he knew her in the Spirit. And the Bible says that we have the same Holy Spirit that Jesus had. The same Spirit of God. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. We don't have a junior Holy Spirit. We don't have some secondary JV subcontracted out version of the Holy Spirit. We have the same Spirit. Which means that we can know what God is saying about us, about the world, about others. It's incredible. But it comes from a place of understanding that in order to hear, you can't be talking. You know, I remember my prayer life, if you'd call it that, was just reaching out to God when I needed something. And if I remembered, you know, I'd thank him when things went well until I got born again, and I learned this lesson. If you want to hear God, your prayer life should switch to about 95% listening and 5% talking. Most people that I meet, I ask them about their prayer life, and I find the opposite. 95% talking, maybe 5% listening, if that. But the truth is that most people just don't know. And I pray that this podcast helps you to understand You can hear God, but you must listen. And the way that I started hearing God was going after words of knowledge. You know, a word of knowledge is when the Lord speaks something to you that you have no business knowing. You know, Jesus with the woman at the well. He didn't know her. He didn't know anything about her life. But God spoke through his spirit to Jesus. And Jesus knew. He knew these things about her. And it caused her to run away, leaving her water at the well, the thing that she went for, and that's a whole other story, but the significance that she would leave her pots behind and run back, vocalize to these people in the town, come meet this man who knows everything about my life. He told me everything about my life. That's what she said. Jesus knew her. He knows you. He knows everyone. And we can tell people what God is saying. And so I started going after this because the same Spirit lives in us. And there's so many verses in the Bible where Jesus discerned, Jesus knew their thoughts. He knew what the Pharisees were thinking, the intents of their heart, and he called them out. And the disciples did the same thing, and we have the same ability. And in order to go after a word of knowledge, you have to have faith, which requires risk. So I want to ask you today, are you willing Are you willing to take a risk? Because anytime you take a risk, there's a possibility of losing something. There's also a possibility of gaining. Great gain. That's why people take risks, because the gain is great. What's the risk? What's the loss? Looking like a fool (laughs) for the name of Jesus. Um, Your reputation which, who cares about that? Philippians 2 says that Jesus made himself of no reputation. People looking at you and thinking that you're dumb or whatever. I mean, who cares about any of... All these things are so superficial. They're not eternal. They don't matter. 
the risk is that your flesh is going to get exposed, which you should already have crucified that. And if you don't know how to crucify your flesh, go listen to my previous episodes. I help you do that. Die to yourself. When you're dead, you don't care about your reputation dying. You're already dead. And it is now Christ in you who lives. And so I started doing this. I started saying, you know what? I've lived for myself for a quarter of a century. I don't care what anyone thinks about me. I'm in love with Jesus, and I want people to know he's real, and God, you got to speak to me. And so I would begin going to restaurants and wherever I was at, and I would say, God, speak to me about my waiter. And then I would pray. And I would just say, God, what what does my waiter do when they're not at work? That's one of the questions I would ask. And I would just picture them doing something. You know, I remember one time I pictured the waiter riding a horse. And they came back and I was like, hey, do you like riding horses? And they were like, no. (laughs) And I was like, oh, okay, you know. And to make it worse, they didn't let me off the hook. They were like, why did you ask me that? Which is always fun, especially when you're a brand new believer and you're just like going after it. And I was like, well, I believe that God speaks. And I was trying to ask him about your life. And I thought that's what I heard. And he was like, oh, cool. You know, he thought it was neat. And so I said, I'm going to keep asking. And he's like, okay. And so he went back and I can't remember specifically, but it was something like, you know, what's your favorite sport or something like that. I was asking God, what, what is he, what does he like to do for sports? And I think he said like golf or something like that, or tennis or something, you know, kind of random. And I was like, do you like playing tennis? And he's like, I love tennis. Like I was a collegiate tennis athlete. And I was like, dude, God just showed me that. And he's like, wow, that's really cool. And I just got to encourage him. And for a while, it was little stuff like that. You know, I was in the police academy at the time. And I would ask God about all my classmates. You know, I'd be like, do you like painting? No. Okay. You know, God still loves you. I was weird. But I cared about them and I cared about God more than myself. I didn't care that I looked like a fool because I knew, God, if I hear you right, if I learn to hear your voice and you speak to me, I could really rock one of my classmates with a word of knowledge. And they will see that you are real. And they will give their lives to you. That was my belief. That's what motivated me. It wasn't to get a right word so I could look cool. It was, Lord, you have to speak to me because if my classmates' hearts are laid bare, which the Bible says when you prophesy, when you do things like this, the secrets of a person's heart are laid bare. What that means is like the things on the inside that I have no business knowing Now they're out in the open. Not bad things, you know, good things, desires of your heart, whatever. God knows you. And there's no way I should know some of this stuff. And you go, wow, there is a God, you know? That's what I wanted. I wanted that reaction. I wanted people to go, oh my gosh, God is really real and he really knows me. And that's what I wanted. And so I kept going after it. And I remember one of my buddies, Jonah Coyne, one of my best friends, he was like, you know what? You should start doing this. He said, go up to someone and say, hey, you're the kind of, you look like the kind of person who, and just let the Holy Spirit take over. (laughs) I was like, oh my gosh, man, this sounds crazy. Like, I'm literally going to start a sentence with nowhere to go. But I was hungry and I was very zealous, and I still am. But I remember... I would go up to people and actually I think the first guy I did it to was correct, you know, and then I missed it like 10 times and I got it. It's just a, it's a learning experience hearing God's voice. But I remember walking up to this guy, we were at the, we were at the waterfront in um, Ruston, Ruston Way in Washington state. And I walked up to this guy and I was like, Hey man, you look like the kind of guy who, and I saw him at a computer, like programming. And I was like, does computer programming, like computer technical work? And he's like, yeah, dude, how'd you know that? Like, I'm in school for that right now. And I was like, whoa, you know, I was freaking out. I was like, dude, God just told me that. Like, God loves you, man. He knows you. And I was so excited that I didn't ask God for anything else. And I just like was like, so have a good day, you know, and that was it. And as I've matured, I've learned you know, we can keep asking God for more. 
and we can really take that person into an encounter with the Lord and see them transformed. And it doesn't take decades. You know, one encounter with God can change your whole life. And, you know, I think about um, this weekend. I was preaching at a revival in Miami. There were a couple thousand people there, and there was this group of women, and they asked me to pray for them. And so I started praying for this one woman. And as soon as I put my hand on her shoulder, I felt like I knew her. I just felt like we had been friends. And I felt like I knew things about her. And I said, you know, you are such a good friend. You're the kind of friend that everybody wants. You really go out of your way. You sacrifice so much. You do things that people don't know about. Things that most people would say they don't even deserve but that's the kind of friend you are and all of her friends around her were like oh my gosh that is so her and like this girl's crying and I just kept asking the Lord for more in in my spirit I was like tell me more Lord tell me more I want to just you know encourage the socks off of this girl so that she just knows 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 that you know her and you love her and I said I even feel like you are a mother. You have a mothering spirit. And as soon as I said that, I thought of the word um, orphan. And I thought of um, like fostering. And so I just said, you you are, you care for the orphans. You're going to break the orphan spirit. There is a, 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 a spirit of adoption over your life. And she starts weeping and wailing. And her friends are all crying now. And they said, she does that. She brings in the the homeless. And she brings in the the motherless. And she brings in the orphans. And she cares for them. And I just began to prophesy over her and speak life over her. And it was an incredible encounter. All because I asked the Lord to speak to me. And I wish I could say every time I pray for someone, it's like that. But. I'm not perfect, and I'm constantly growing in my relationship with the Lord, but that wouldn't have happened if I cared about what I looked like if I got it wrong. And all of those women received an incredibly accurate word, and it's not because I'm amazing. It's not because I'm the evangelist or I'm the guy with the following of the podcast. It's just because I love them. And I said, God, please, you have to speak through me, or I have nothing to say. If you don't come, if you don't speak... I have nothing to give these women. And they're asking for prayer. They need breakthrough. Please help me encourage them. Help me show them that you see them where they're at and you love them. And when your goal is to love, you're always going to win. Even if you, you know, quote unquote, get a word wrong. People will know if your intention is to show off a gift or it's to love them. I've missed so many words, but my aim was to love. And that person left incredibly encouraged because I would even reach out but I've been with people who simply tried to get a word and when they got it wrong they just said oh oh well you know thanks and they walked away and that person was confused and they did not feel loved by God they actually felt like God didn't know them and so we have great responsibility we are entrusted with hearing God's voice and telling earth what heaven is saying and so I want you to know that this is not something that you should take lightly. You know, Paul said in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, talking about love, and 13 and 14 are so critical. And he says this, he says, you can know all mysteries. You can have every word of knowledge. You can have all faith to move every mountain. You can do everything spiritual, all the gifts. But if you don't have love, you have nothing. You are like a clanging cymbal or like a gong. Just annoying, making noise people wish you would just stop. Love is the goal. Love is the operating system through which the gifts flow. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else is going to follow. And so as I share things with you and as I try to teach you how to hear God and encourage you, you have to know that love is the goal and love 
is the means through which everything flows. You know, hearing God took missing God's voice so that I could understand what wasn't God. I would try to give a word, it would be wrong, and I would go back and I would assess. I would be like, okay, why did I think that was it? Or there would be times when I would have a word, I would go, no, I don't think that's right. And I would pray again, hear something different, and I would give that word, and the person would say, no, actually, you know, it's this. And it would be, it would have been the first thing I thought. You know, so I would have gotten it right, except I didn't think it was right, so I prayed again. And there's opposite times where I got a word, I said, I don't think that's it. I got another word, I gave them the second word, and that was correct. The first one was wrong, and I discerned that it was wrong. I can't tell you how that happens. It's just through relationship. It's just through praying and just discerning and feeling like, God, is this what you're saying? And it takes risk. But if I missed it, or even if I got it right, I would go back and I would I would sit with the Lord and I would say, Lord, why did I get that word right? How did I know that that was you? Or why didn't I get that word right? Where did I, what happened? And I would just assess and I would just look inward and I always humble myself and say, Lord, I want to hear you. You know, help me, show me. Was I in my flesh? Was I distracted? Was that something I thought about previously that I just thought was you? You know, what was it? And the Lord sees that. We're trying to hear him speak. What father wouldn't love that? Man, when my boy starts talking, I am going to be listening so hard to try to understand what little words and sounds he's putting together. I'm not going to get frustrated with him. God is a good father. He sees us trying to hear and trying to understand. So keep going. Hearing God also took, and this is the most important one, and it should be a given. I don't know why I have to say this, but I do. Hearing God took knowing the Bible because I need to know what God is like. And I also need to know what he's not like. You know, I need to be able to discern the stranger's voice, the voice of the devil or demons, the voice of the enemy, or the voice of my flesh against the voice of God. God is never changing. He's unchanging. He always has been, always will be. And when you know the Bible, you get to know the heart culture. You get to know the character of God. I'm not just talking about the New Testament. You need to know the Bible. Read the Old Testament. Read the New Testament. Understand what God has been like and what God is like and what God will be like. It's unchanging, but it's different. And when you know all of the different ways that God is shown through the Bible, then you can begin to have a grid for what is Him when He's speaking and what is not Him. I like to tell people when they're trying to give words, I say, you know what? I don't want you to try to get words of knowledge about someone's life. I want you to give words of encouragement. Because a lot of times I've seen new people walking in these gifts or trying to, and everything is negative. And I don't know where that comes from, but I put an emphasis on encouragement. You know, I was teaching someone how to do this, and they went up to someone and said, I feel like you struggle with depression. You know, I feel like you're depressed. And they didn't really know where to go from there. Um, And if you're not careful, you can put people in bondage, you know, by speaking things over them. Especially if they are depressed and you feel like God is just telling you that they're depressed and that's all you tell them. Hey, God showed me that you're depressed, you know? That doesn't really help anyone if you don't know how to steward that gift or handle it. So I say, listen, if you ever hear the Lord and it's something bad, you think it's the Lord, go prophesy the opposite. If I get a word and I feel like God told me the person next to me is depressed, I would go up to them and I would say, you know what? God just wanted to encourage you today that in him is life and life more abundantly and that Jesus breaks the heavy yoke of depression and bondage and anxiety. And I don't know if you deal with any of that, but I want you to know something. There is joy and there is peace in the Lord. And just look at how they react. I've had that happen so many times where they say, you know what? I do struggle with depression. And that's when you can say, God told me that. That's why I came up to you. I wanted to encourage you. Speak the opposite. If God tells you that a storm is going to come, destroy a house, 
then pray and say, Lord, I thank you that this storm would be moved in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray protection over this house and everyone inside and begin to speak the opposite. Begin to prophesy life, even if you feel like you're hearing something that is a message of death or destruction. There's a reason you're being told these things, if it is from the Lord, so that you can speak life and truth. And I kind of got on a little tangent there, but it's very important to me when people are learning God's voice and they want to go out and they want to take risks, and I love that. But our goal should be to encourage. You know, ask God to tell you things about someone. Simple things, things like I was saying in the beginning. Lord, what does this person do when they're not at work? What's this person's favorite food? What's this person's favorite color? What's this person's favorite type of music? What's this person's name? Lord, give me a date that might be significant to their life. I've had that happen before. When I was praying, I was going to go do some evangelism with friends, and I prayed and said, Lord, who am I going to meet? And I thought of the name. It just came as a thought. You need to understand that hearing God, I've never heard his audible voice. Now, I know people that have, but it's very rare, the amount of people I know and the amount of times it's happened. For most of my friends, hearing God is having a thought or getting an impression. Like you just have this feeling all of a sudden, or you just have this knowing, or maybe you see a picture. Or I've seen, a, it was like a movie played out before my eyes. I saw this scenario happen, and that was God speaking to me. But oftentimes it comes in the form of a thought. And when you get these thoughts, you go out in faith that they're God. And I remember praying, and I thought of the name Julie, and then I immediately thought of the date June 13th. And long story short, I ended up meeting a girl whose mom's name was Julie, her anniversary was June 13th, and she was going through a, a, a trial with her husband. That's why the anniversary date was significant. You know, God was speaking to the covenant they had made. And so I got to pray over her and encourage her and bless her. And so go after things like that. Ask God, man, show me. I remember I was preaching in Massachusetts one time, and I went out to lunch with the uh, pastors, and I said, let's get a word of knowledge for our waitress. And as soon as I closed my eyes to pray for her, I saw Bob Ross, which is one of my favorite shows on TV. And uh, I love watching his painting, but he's a painter if, for some of you who might not know who he is, especially, you know, Gen Z and younger. He's been passed on for several years, and uh, you might not know who he is. He's an incredible painter. He used to do these really, really amazing nature paintings on PBS, a television channel. Um, in like 23 minutes. Absolutely incredible. You know, you'd go like get a glass of water, come back, and he had done a whole mountain range. And anyways, I saw Bob Ross, and so I went up to my waitress, and I was like, hey, you know, do you do anything with painting? And she's like, yeah, I'm in school for painting. Like, how'd you know that? And I said, man, God spoke to me. I was praying, and I asked God to tell me what you like to do, and I saw Bob Ross. And she's like, I love Bob Ross. And I was like, listen, God knows you, and you're right where you're supposed to be. You know, he gave you this gift, and I just want to encourage you to use it for his glory. And I want to encourage you to keep pursuing a relationship with Jesus. That's what he paid for. And she was so encouraged. And that is a great example of how to use a simple word of knowledge. Um, I want to tell one story that I tell all the time because it is so powerful. It has gripped me since I was a young believer. And... It has activated me and so many people. I can honestly say it has activated tens of thousands of people around the world just from me telling it. This girl travels and tells her own story. And some of you may have heard it. It's about the story of the woman in the 7-Eleven. And so if you've heard this podcast and you're like, man, I want to take risks. I want to hear God more. I want to be used by him more. Let me tell you a great example of how and why we should be taking these risks. So there was a woman in a prayer group. And she said, God, I want to be used by you. I want to be used by you. I'll do anything. And she said, I will do anything you ask me for the next 30 days. As long as it's not illegal, unethical, or immoral. Because God won't ask you to do anything like that. And so she said, I don't care how weird it is or strange. As long as it's not one of those things, that's my criteria. I will do it. 
and she said amen and she was driving home from the prayer meeting that night and she gets to a red light and she looks over and there's a 7-eleven on the corner of the street and she gets a picture in her mind of her standing on her head inside of that store and she does what most of us would do you know she kind of shakes it off and she's like that was weird and then it's followed up by a thought and this is the thought that comes to her head I thought you said you would do anything and she goes oh my gosh that was God okay yeah I have to do this and so she goes into the 7-eleven and she stands on her head and the employee comes out of the back room and begins screaming and crying and the woman gets up and she says what what is it like why are you crying And the employee says, I was just in the back room praying. And I said, God, if you're real, send someone in here to stand on their head or I am going to kill myself when I get home. Come on, that is powerful. That is the power of God to save, to reveal himself to a woman who's hurting and to use a woman who's desperate to be used by God. And so he can use you in that same way. And I want to pray for you right now as my son is waking up. I want to pray for you to be activated to hear God's voice. I want to give you permission to pursue God's voice. You know, you don't need my permission, but just as a contact point of faith, I want you to know as a Christian, it is scriptural, it is biblical for you to pursue the voice of your Father. Jesus paid the price to remove our sin on the cross so that we could pursue our Father in heaven so that we could run after the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that we have the kingdom living within us if we are born again. And so I want you to know you are allowed to do these things, and I'm going to pray for you to go do them. So, Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name for every person that is listening. Lord, I thank you that you showed us what is possible when we live by the Spirit of God. And I thank you that you have poured out that spirit on all flesh, as Joel 2 has said. And I thank you, God, that you have poured out your spirit just like you did at Pentecost in the upper room. And that, Father, we have the ability to know what you are saying about our lives, others' lives, about situations in our world and in our families and in our cities. And so, God, I pray for every person listening that they would begin to run after you and hear your voice for the world around them that desperately needs an encounter with you. God, I pray that they would hear you with such clarity, that they would have such boldness as they go. I command every bit of fear of man to die right now in Jesus' name. Every bit of anxiety and worry leave in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you have qualified us to be a mouthpiece for you, God. And so I pray that we would go forsaking our reputation just as you did, Jesus, and do what you are doing and say what you are saying. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Listen, I want to encourage you to share this podcast, share this episode. If this encouraged you, if this activated you, I want as many people as possible to hear this because imagine if millions of people heard this message, went out and applied it, and we were all telling the world what God was saying. How amazing, what an impact we could have. Hey, many of you know I wrote a book. It's now available as an ebook. And so no matter what country you are in, if you have access to Amazon or Kindle, you can buy a copy of my ebook. It's only $10. It's available at the link in the description or in my bio or at shanewinnings.com. Or you can go to Amazon and search. The book is called I Will Always Overcome. And it is a nine-week devotional that is designed to help you hear God and designed to help you grow in your faith. Um, So check that book out. We've already sold over 1,100 copies in just a couple of weeks. It's been amazing. And the reviews that are coming in are incredible. I want to tell you about an amazing university called Faith International University. Um, Out of my mission group, there's about 30 of us. More than 66% attend that school, and there's a reason. If you are looking to get a bachelor's, master's, or PhD, if you're looking to do it at your own pace, faithiu.edu is where you need to go. You can do school online 
and it's it's adult rules. They assign you classes and homework. It's due at the end of the week. You can split it up however you want, and it's very affordable. If you're a missionary, there's great financial aid for you, so go check that out. I want to tell you about a historic event that is happening September 3rd, 2022 in Frisco, Texas at the Riders Field. It's a baseball stadium. One Voice Student Missions, my mission group, Lou Engel in Upper Room are partnering and believing to gather 50,000 youth and parents at that stadium. Why? Because 60 years ago, there was a 22-word prayer that students would say in school every day, and the courts had it removed. 22-word prayer that blessed the teachers, blessed the school, blessed the parents, and blessed those in positions of authority over them, and gave glory and honor to Almighty God. That prayer has been removed since 1962, and you can check the statistics starting as soon as that prayer was removed, SAT scores went down, crime skyrocketed, sex outside of marriages and STDs increased, divorces increased, so many things happened as a result of that prayer being removed. And so we are gathering for a massive prayer movement to see God come back to schools. So I am calling 1,000 youth and parents from each of the 50 states to come to Texas in September and join us for this one-day free event. It will be historical. If you want to follow anything that I'm doing, you can check out my social media. I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Shane.Winnings or on YouTube at Shane Winnings, where if you are listening to this and you want to watch the podcast, I do record them with a video, and you can watch them on my YouTube. Finally, I want to pray for you. In every episode, we pray for healing. And I ask that you would let us know if you were healed by any of these prayers. And I ask that you would go rate and review this podcast if you enjoy it. It really helps with the reach for us to reach more people. Um, We do this for absolutely free. That is why I asked if you would join to partner with us. And rating and reviewing also greatly helps us with our reach. So let me pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you in the name of Jesus that you paid the price for our bodies to be restored. Jesus, I thank you that you healed every person you encountered, every person that asked you for prayer, every person that you touched that needed healing was healed 100% of the time. And that's because you walked in authority by the power of the Holy Spirit and you have given us that same spirit. And so right now in Jesus' name, I pray for any person watching or listening, every pain, every sickness, every disease, every limitation, go right now in Jesus' name. I say, body, be absolutely healed for the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. And I even pray, I feel like there's someone watching with an eye issue. You have an issue with your vision. Lord, I thank you for restoring their vision now in Jesus' mighty name. See in Jesus' name. Every bit of blindness, every limitation, leave in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for listening. We will see you next time.